Right, so just uh, make sure that everybody has um, managed to um, turn their sound off. That would be great. Thank you very much for doing that. Good afternoon, everybody, or good evening, I should say now, everybody. I hope you're all well. Um, my name's uh, Ben Stitcher, and I've got the, the honour and the privilege to be your child or children's uh, new head teacher when they join us in, at Home Firth High School in September. Um, I hope that you are excited by the prospect of your child's um, new adventure. We are certainly very, very excited to get to know them um, and hopefully help them to grow and to develop and have a really happy and successful time at their secondary school. As I say, I'd just like to first of all, um, thank you very much for choosing us as your, your school. We do not in any way ever take that for, uh, for, for granted. And we're grateful that you've um, entrusted with us your most um, prized um, asset or possession, your children. And we promise you that we will do our absolute best by each and every one of, of the, the children that come to us. I think it's really important to say at this stage that um, I'm sure that we'll all get on famously as the, the days, the weeks, the months and the years roll by. But whatever does happen, um, if there ever are issues that we need to discuss, I, I really want you to, to know that even if you don't always agree with us, that we've always, always got your, your child's best interest at, at heart. And as, as any parent knows, I'm a parent myself, sometimes children don't think that parents or teachers have got their best interest at heart because you might not be allowing them to do what they want. But I can absolutely promise you that we that we always will have. We're also uh, big enough and ugly enough to admit when things don't go right and make sure that we do put them right because everything that we do at Home Firth High School is to ensure that your children have a happy and a successful time at school. So in terms of what I hope to achieve, speak to the next 20, 25 minutes or so, um, well, I really hope that um, it gives you a sort of a flavour of what your child can expect or your children can expect when they join us in September. I hope it'll answer some of the questions that you that you might that you might have. And as I say, really importantly, I hope it means that you're or helps your child to feel excited about the transition they're going to have, but that you feel excited and feel confident and comfortable in the decision that you've made um, in terms of your child's secondary and education. I really want to start start off by uh, talking to you about the, the school's ethos, what we're about, what we actually want to achieve. And I think the, the very first thing is, is this very simply. We think that every single child has the right to be ambitious for themselves. Now, that isn't my version of ambitious, what I want for myself or my own children. It's yours and their version of what it means to be ambitious. We want them to have dreams, we want them to have um, stretch in their lives. We want them to, to achieve all the things that they want to do. And that we're not interested in your child's background. We're not interested in um, what, what, where you live. Uh, we're not interested in what parents' jobs are, any of those things. All we'll see in September is a, is a bundle of energy and a bundle of ambition and drive and hopes um, that will come and will join us in September. And we want to make sure that we do everything that, to help those dreams and those ambitions come true. We also strongly believe that every child deserves the, to be given the opportunity and support to achieve their dreams. That's obviously every parent and carer's job to do everything that they can to make sure that happens. But it's also very much the school's job as well to support children, to provide them with those opportunities, whether that's academically, whether that's socially, morally, culturally, whatever those opportunities we are, we, we want to give them as many as we possibly can and to give them that support to mean that their dreams and their hopes and ambitions come, come true. And the final thing that kind of permeates our school is that we believe that every child at our school is every bit as good as any pupil any in the, in the country now as a school we are not arrogant in the slightest but, but we do like to breed into our children help them to develop a quiet confidence in themselves a real belief that if there's an opportunity they're as good as anybody else there's no reason why they can't make great things happen in their life we don't want any child to walk away from Home Firth High School who is frightened of their future or worried about what their future might be. We're extremely keen uh, on, on helping children to achieve those dreams and ambitions. And we think that if, if what your child's dreams and ambitions are, if somebody can achieve it, why shouldn't your child? Why shouldn't your child do really, really well at secondary school? So, um, Probably I would imagine over the last week and the next week as well, there are probably about three and a half thousand, I would say, secondary head teachers and principals um, 
who will be doing similar presentations to this. We'll be talking to parents about um, what school's going to be like after the transition from, from primary school or middle school in some cases. And what they'll all say is they'll all say, we've got really high expectations and aspirations for your pupils. I would be staggered if they said anything different to that. You're not gonna hear people saying, well, we're not, we don't really care uh, what your children achieve, whatever will be, will be. And you know, we're not, we don't really have any expectations of what they'll achieve. No school's going to say that. And certainly we absolutely don't. What, what I would say about Home Firth High School, what I would guarantee you is that we have incredibly high expectations and aspirations. And we do that because we believe that having high expectations of everybody in our school community, whether it's a member of staff, a pupil, um, whether it's a parent or a carer who comes into school uh, and those aspirations that we have for them as well, are the best way to ensure that the, the most important people at our school, the children, um, do really, really well. And even more fundamentally than that, that they know they're doing well, they develop that um, real confidence and that real inner confidence, that quiet self-belief, that quiet determination is a path to a happy and successful life. But also really importantly, it builds resilience, it builds um, a, set, a real sense of well-being with the child so that your children are extremely happy in their day-to-day -day lives. I have this utopian vision of every child who comes to our school they don't need to be woken up by their alarm because they're so excited about coming to school. They leap out of bed every morning, jump in the shower, get themselves ready for the school. They dance down the stairs and they have their breakfast. And all they want to talk to you about is all the great things they're going to do at school today. That's what we want for all our children. And we think that the best way of actually making that happen is to have high expectations and aspirations for everybody at our school. Okay, so that begs the question, well, how do we do that? Well, there are six basic things that we try to get right all the time at Home Firth High School. It's about attendance, behavior, classroom, extracurricular, so that's what happens outside the classroom, our school environment, and really, really importantly, probably most importantly, about enjoyment, because that's the key to doing well at secondary school, well in life indeed, to enjoy what you're doing enjoy um, the um, the day-to-day -day and the longer term as well. So attendance is very, very important to us at Home Firth High School because the more children are at school, the more they will learn and the happier we'll be. Now we all know, certainly over the last, unfortunately over the last 18 months or so, that attendance has often been really, really difficult. And clearly there are circumstances which are outside all of our control at the moment. Um, as a head teacher, I'm, I'm aware of that as, as, as anybody, and I understand the frustrations, and hopefully we'll be coming to an end of those frustrations very, very soon. But attendance is incredibly important. When I visited lots of your children um, in uh, September and October last year, before you made your choices in their primary schools, I told them uh, about a piece of work I did many, many years ago when I was a deputy head teacher. It was really simple. I asked lots of different children how happy they were, just how happy they were at school, but how happy they were on a scale of one to five. One being not very happy, five being incredibly happy. And once I got those numbers, I cross-referenced it with what their attendance was at school. And when I asked the children, what, why, why did they think that was the case? What did that tell us? All of them said the same thing. They all said, well, it's obvious because the more that you come to school, the happier you will be. And I really believe that. I believe that if you go to a really good school where you're cared for, you're loved, you're supported, you're pushed, you're challenged, there's high expectations, that you will be happier and happier. And that's a real positive for the school, it's a positive for the child, but it's also, it's a real positive for family life as well, which is extremely important to us as, as well. We want that great relationship with, with all uh, parents and carers, but we also, also uh, want that great relationship because we know that will provide the support that children require and will help them to do really well. Now we have a school target for attendance of 97%. So what that means is that um, on average, if every child had 97% and we achieved that school target, um, children would have on average about five days off the school year. And I always say to the children when they, when they come back to school in uh, September, that the great thing is about attendance that every day, or every year that you come back on that first day and you're in school, 
we're all starting on 100%. And the trick of it all is, is to try to make sure that we continue that 100% attendance for as long as possible. As I say, clearly sometimes things go, go wrong or things happen that means that it's not possible to attend school. But really and truly, as much as is humanly possible, we expect and want children to be in school, very simply because they'll learn more and they will be happier. We're really, really keen at Home Firth High School in terms of punctuality because um, we think that it's good manners to be on time. We think that it's um, polite to be on time. And we think to be to be uh, to not be punctual is basically um, it's, it's in a way it's, it's disrespectful to other people. Now, again, obviously, sometimes things happen and we know that we absolutely know that. But uh, we, we encourage people to be here in lots and lots of time for school so that they're here early so that we can get on with the school day. And it doesn't disrupt the child who's um, not, not on time, doesn't disrupt the other children, nor does it um, interrupt the teaching staff and the other staff in school. So it's a really big thing in school to be punctual. School starts at 8.45 and we like children to be here at least five minutes before the start of school, please. Um, Behaviour. Um, perhaps make, this makes me sound tremendously old fashioned, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, we're a strict school in old parlance. Uh, we believe in old fashioned values of courtesy, politeness um, and respect for others, but also for oneself as well. Uh, and we'd like to think that we have very, very high standards. And I know um, we have lots of visitors to our school, whether that's school governors, whether that's um, other educational professionals. And the thing that they always say to us when they come and they see children in lesson times or break times is just how superb the behaviour is at school. Now, like any institution with well over 1,300 young people in it and lots and lots of adults as well, sometimes things happen that we um, don't approve of and we always do our absolute best to deal with them in the most um, efficient, fair and um, uncomplicated way, if you like, as we possibly can. So expect if something goes wrong that it will be dealt with fairly, that we dealt with efficiently, but also be really secure in the knowledge that you know, we're experienced people and experienced teachers and we know that absolutely nobody, nobody is perfect. OK, and so that sometimes things do go wrong. But if we have a united front when that happens, if we work together when that happens, things will be successful <laughs> on that basis. And you know, the children will really benefit from that. At Home Firth, as you now know, we run a house system and um, your children are lucky enough to be in Taylor House. And I'm sure Mr. Whittle will tell you in a few minutes about why it's called Taylor House and the fact that Taylor House is the best house. Um, and that's his opinion, not mine, because I am obviously completely and utterly impartial. Um, but we run a house system that's central to everything we do in school in terms of um, the interaction between pupils um, and of different ages, um, student leadership in the school, but it's also really important in terms of things like house competitions as well. We're very, very keen that children get involved in different house competitions. And I'm sure Mr. Whittle and uh, Mrs. Breer will mention the wide variety of house competitions that your children will be uh, able to take part in. We want children to take part in as much of that as possible so they feel a real sense of belonging um, and to, their, to their house. Um, uniform might view it slightly differently to how some primary schools view it and um, we're keen on uniform at school i've never understood schools who have a uniform and then don't make people stick to what they what they say i think that just stores up stores up problems for people and again i'm sure mr whittle and mrs Brew will pick up on this but we are uniform um requirements are on a school website and the information that you've been sent out so please make sure that you stick to those any issues whatsoever please do get in touch with us and ask us ask us if things are right or if there's anything else that we can that we can help you with and um, or advice that we can give you we'd much rather sort out problems now than before we get to september because if something isn't right in september we will say to you that's going to have to change uh, and i know lots of schools will say that to you but um we really mean it and um, so you, you know you, it, it's really important that we get this right straight away now one of the things that um that sometimes does cause issues is about the schools, the, the schools, the shoes that we expect uh, children to wear for school. Um, the list of what we allow, the types of shoes with pictures is on our, our website um, and the ones that we don't allow are on there as well. If they're not right, if you buy some, we will expect you to, to change them, to get it right. So 
we always say, um, if in doubt, um, email us, get in contact with us, take a picture and ask us if this, uh, these are all right or not. Um, and obviously we'll give you some advice on that. And obviously make sure that you keep your receipts so that um, you, can, you can take them back if they are not right. Now, just a little tip that one of the issues that we sometimes have is that uh, parents um, quite rightly go to a shop like Clark's and they say, well, you know, um, what range of school shoes should we get? The lovely assistants in Clark's will take them over to their school shoes and children will sometimes pick out, again, understandably, shoes that we don't allow because they are trainer style school shoes. Um, and I've never really understood how that works. It shows my my age and my fashion sense that shoes are shoes and trainers are trainers. But, and the, uh, but there you go. The lovely lady or gentleman in Clark's will tell you that they are from the school range to their school shoes. Parents will buy them in all good conscience. They'll come to school on the first day and will say, I'm really sorry, but we don't allow those type of shoes. And the parents will often say to us, or the carers will say, but the lady in Clark said they're school shoes. Well, that might well be true, but um, ultimately it's not Clark's high school, it's Home Firth High School. So it's what we expect that needs to be um, fulfilled. So please, please, please ask us if you're not sure because we don't want to get off on the wrong foot and we certainly don't want you or your child or children to feel um, any anxiety whatsoever um, on the first day and, and not being sure what's right and what's what's not right but as I say please be aware that if it isn't right we will say and we will expect it and it, and it will have to change um, in terms of mobile phones um, as the father myself of a child is about to transition to to another school um, mobile phones are um, um, it's kind of a hot topic. We've taken the decision as, a, as, as, as parents that my son isn't going to have a mobile phone because he's slightly younger than, than, than yours. Um, in school, it's absolutely fine to, for your children to bring a mobile phone to school. Um, but but w as soon as they walk onto school property, so not just into the buildings, but anywhere on the school, that phone must be switched off and it must not be visible. So they can't have it in their pockets well, they can't have it anywhere for us to, to see. And I would say that probably 90% of all the problems that we have in school emanate from mobile phones. Um, so I'm sure lots of your children have got them already. Um, but as I say, in school, it's a mobile free zone. If children need to contact home, it's no problem. They can come to the school office or reception and we can make all those arrangements. In desperate times, it's absolutely fine for your child to ask a member of staff if they may get their mobile phone um, um, out to use if it's absolutely desperate. But th those situations are very, very few and far between. But just so you're aware, we do not allow mobile phones in school. They must be switched off and they must not be visible. Um, the reason for that are, are, are many fold. Probably the most important one is we want our school to, to be a place where for six or seven hours a day at least, children and um, aren't worrying about what's going on on social media or anything else they can just concentrate on talking to each other and enjoying being in school rather than be looking at a, at a screen okay in terms of the classroom um, what we're really interested in at home firth is the amount of progress your children make so we'll get a wealth of data for your children's primary school um, when when they start uh, and also we'll do some checks ourselves to see what your child's starting point is. And, and really, the only reason we're interested in that is to see how far we can um, take your children, how much progress they make. We, it's of no consequence to us whatsoever how well your child's done any of their testing or any of the testing that we might do when they start, start school. We just want to see and measure the progress they're actually making because that's the absolute key for us is about progress in terms of the curriculum your children will have a very balanced and very broad curriculum so you'd expect as you'd expect english maths and science traditional subjects like history and geography rpse and um, they will do drama and dt computing and um, lots and lots of new and exciting subjects and lots of subjects they might have done before but we'd like to think as a as a secondary school that will do them slightly differently with subject specialists and different equipment that will really really um help your children to to thrive we've recently rewritten the whole school curriculum over the last two or three years and we're constantly updating it to make sure that it's very well put together it's really well sequenced so it's, it follows logically for children to to boost their learning and help them to learn 
in a more um, substantial and sustained way. Um, and, we're, and also we want to, in terms of if we can make sure it's very stretching for every child so that they can make that progress we mentioned before. And when I visited your children in their primary schools in, um, in September, October last year, what I said to them, and I'm going to say it to you in a second, might surprise you, but I absolutely mean this. I have got no real interest in any exam grade that any child gets. I, I don't mind what exam grades they get. As long as, as long as they can say to you, they can say to their teachers, and most importantly, they can say to themselves, I tried my absolute best. Because my experience tells me if they do that and they're well taught with a good curriculum, caring teachers, parents and carers at home who are supportive, your children will do absolutely brilliantly. They'll be um, feel really good and really positive. So in the classroom, but around the school as well, all our reward systems, one in particular with the main, our main reward system that Mr. Whittle has designed, which is a great system, is all about effort. It's all about hard work and determination because that's what really counts as far as we're concerned. So if you're a parent of a child who thinks, well, my child is never really recognized, even though they do everything right and they try really hard at school, but because they don't get the top mark in maths or because they don't get the bottom mark in maths, nobody pays any attention. I can promise you that won't be the case at Home Firth High School. But if they're putting that effort in, we'll notice, we'll tell them and will tell you so that you can celebrate that with your child. It's really, really important to us. Um, Home Firth High School is a reading school. And um, boringly, if somebody asked me what one of, my, one of my hobbies is, one of my hobbies is reading. Um, and I think that it's an incredibly important skill for um, children to have, um, to be able to read clearly, but also a love of reading. All the data that different um, educational um, establishments and universities and think tanks gather all says that children who read and read for pleasure are the ones who are happiest at school and the most successful. So your children will be encouraged to read. They will we'll have specific reading lessons that will have on their timetable. They will read a variety of terrific books and to talk about them and to predict and to make connections so they really, really enjoy um, reading. Now, I'm really well aware that at secondary school, that's something that very often can drop off for children. Very often, I have to say, for boys in particular. So we need to do that in school, but we also need your help at home as well. If children see you read, particularly for um, a, a, a dad or an uncle or a brother or a grandfather, if, they, if boys see you reading, they'll do the same thing as well. So if you really want to help your children, that's a really great way of actually doing it. Now, in terms of homework, you'll be glad to know, you'll probably be glad to know, your children will be less glad to know, they will be getting homework at Home Firth High School. They'll get something between 30 and 45 minutes homework per night, five times a week. There'll be a homework timetable, so they'll know exactly what homework they're going to get, and also that homework we've put on the school's frog system so that you can see it as well, and you can see what homework they've actually, actually got um, at the same time. In terms of extracurricular, and um, very, very keen on this at Home Firth High School. We have an absolute plethora of different opportunities. Many, many sports clubs for people of different um, ability ranges, house competitions and activities, whether that's our house arts competition, house languages, the tour de home firth, and um, sports competitions, uh, spelling bees, just a huge list that we didn't really encourage your children to, to get involved with. Our experience tells us that the children who get involved in extracurricular activities are really the ones who enjoy the most um, being in schools. So school just isn't about lessons and break times and lunch times. It's more than that. We do a, a fantastic school play um, every year. Hopefully it'll be back for, 20, uh, for 2022. And again, if you've got any budding actors uh, or dancers or singers, encourage them to get involved because I think it's life affirming to be involved in our school play. It's absolutely tremendous. It really is. It's professional standards. So please encourage your sons and daughters to get involved. Um, lots and lots of trips and visits that we, ha that we have um, for children to go on that will be um, available for your, your children to get involved with. Um, and we'd encourage you to do that as much as you can. And we also have activities week, which is the last week of the summer term, which all the children in year seven, eight and nine um, can take part in a variety of different packages 
uh, and, and as I say, I would really encourage you all to do that. I always say to the children on the first day back in September to make themselves a promise that they will take part in at least one extracurricular activity every term because it will mean something really fun to look forward to. What we try to do at Home Firth is make sure that we have one big school event for children every um, every half term so they really feel involved. So the first half term, we have our sponsored walk. The second, we have our Christmas variety spectaculars, which are just great, great events for children to, to, to come and watch. And we have the tour to home Firth, activities week, sports days, something at least once every half term where children think, oh, great, it's so great this half term after Easter because this half term we'll be doing the tour to home Firth. The last half term is great because we'll be doing activities week. We like big events at home for everybody can be excited about and get involved with. In terms of our um, environment, we spent well over a million pounds over the last two years bringing the school up to date to refurb it as much as we possibly can. We've got um, um, lots and lots of new facilities, but some of the newer facilities that will be completed this summer, that your children with the first ones to be part of will be more new science labs. Um, they are absolutely Fantastic, they're university standard science labs, not the sort of things you normally see in school. New art room facilities, which are basically look like art studios. We want the children to be excited when they go into art and feel that it's a real experience for them. New music facilities, um, so completely refurb rooms, but also an absolute state of the art IT equipment going in there as well for, for the young people to, to use. Um, continuing our um, redecorated um, and, uh, and our decoration update so that that's going to look spectacular for them as well we've also got the nicest toilets i think probably of any school i would wager in the country they're kind of the equivalent to what you'd expect to see in a, a really nice four or five star hotel or a really really nice restaurant because home firth attention to detail is extremely um, important to us the last day is all about enjoyment and that's what we want for your children want them to enjoy um, coming into into school now, the last thing I want to say to you is that um, I am really, really well aware this year, more than any other year, about the, the transition and its impact, not just on children, but also on parents and carers as well, because um, there's a real danger when your child moves from primary to secondary school, that you feel that you're losing something, you're losing influence, uh, you're losing some contact with your, your children. And what we want to try to make sure at Home Firth High School is that you don't feel that, that you still feel very much part of um, the uh, education of your of your children. So to help us to do that, we'll arrange different events for you to come into school, whether that's parents' evenings, um, whether that's uh, parent information sessions, but we want you to come in. You know, if for nothing else, we spent the best part of two million pounds over the last three years, making our school look great. And we are desperately disappointed that you couldn't come and see it tonight and that you couldn't come and see it in October for the open evening. So we're really, really keen that you have those opportunities all the way through your child's school career with us here at Home Firth to make sure that um, you feel very much part of their education. I am um, really well aware that it isn't just your child's secondary school, it's your secondary school of choice as well. So we really, really want you to feel part of their education journey. Uh, I'll end. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, where I, 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 I where I started, that um, we are thrilled that you've chosen us to educate your children for the next five years. And we're not perfect. We don't always get everything right. But I'll tell you something for nothing. We are desperate to get everything right all the time. So if it doesn't go right, we'll do something about it. But our starting point will always, always, always be the uh, welfare and the success and the happiness of your children. Thank you very much for listening to what I've got to say. Mr. Blazard's going to take over, I think, again in a second and pass you on to uh, 